I don't even really begin considering, you know, how many grams of this or that I'm taking in each day. First thing I do is I eliminate any excess calories, meaning sometimes I'll snack on potato chips. Maybe I'll have some ice cream at night. What's up, everybody? It's been a hot minute. Welcome to AMA. I'm your host, Evison Dapani. This is Ask Me Anything. Been a little bit since we did kind of a traditional sit down Q and A session, so I figured let's do one. In hitting your macros, I see you're eating gluten free. Why specifically are you using gluten free flours? That's actually a great question. So gluten, right? Let me let's just start at the very beginning. What is gluten? Gluten is a protein found in wheat. And some people claim to have a problem with it. Some people most definitely have a problem with it. Oddly, it seems like so many people in recent years find it problematic. Whereas, I mean, when I was growing up, I never heard about anybody with a gluten intolerance. Uh, nowadays, it's like you could, you could hold up a bank with a bagel if you wanted to. What changed? Well, one theory I've heard, and this is plausible, this sounds logical, is that it's maybe not necessarily a problem with gluten itself or with even wheat itself, but because wheat undergoes such heavy application of pesticides that maybe it's some type of negative reaction to the chemicals, to the pesticides themselves. I mean, that sounds plausible to me. I don't know for certain, you know, even like when people have trouble with dairy, I'm a good example of that. Um, I don't have an allergy. I'm not going to die if I have dairy, but I feel like shit. Like I just, I feel like sick. Like I, if I have dairy, it's like, I'm, I almost feel like I have the flu. Like I want to go lay down. I'm not hungry. I feel nauseous and I just feel like I've been poisoned. It's not a lactose problem because I've used lactase enzyme with my, along with my consumption of dairy, I've tried whey isolates. You know, people say, well, if you're consuming raw dairy and it's, it's organic, you're not going to have that problem. Tried that. No dice. You know, I consumed dairy growing up. Well, if I start at the very beginning when I was a baby, um, once I came off of breast milk and I had cow's milk, couldn't tolerate it. So I had to have goat's milk. I reached a point where I consumed dairy regularly, uh, even up through my teens my early 20s when I was bodybuilding, I consumed a lot of dairy. I think it's great for growth. It's delicious. I love it. Didn't really find it problematic. And when I would diet for contests, dairy consumption just kind of incidentally would go down. Milk, yogurt, cheese doesn't really fit into like a pre-contest diet. So I would find that when the show was over and I'd go back to including it, I wouldn't feel so great. And then in 2009, I dieted for the New York Pro and I went all whole food. So contests prior to that, I would pretty much eliminate milk, cheese, butter, things like that, but I would still be consuming whey protein, even though it was maybe in the form of an isolate. In 2009, when I did New York, no protein. I was working with Oscar Ardon, and one of the recommendations that he made was to get rid of protein shakes and consume only whole food. I did that. And you know, when you're eating five, six meals a day of whole food, it's a lot of work. It gets boring. And shakes, you know, shakes are delicious. They're convenient and they definitely help break up the monotony, right? They're sweet. They're chocolatey. You take them on the go. You don't have to sit there and chew and chew and chew for a half an hour. Um, so when the show was over, I was really looking forward to incorporating maybe a shake or two a day back into my regimen. But much to my disappointment, I just could not tolerate it. Again, I just felt like absolute shit. And this was the period where I tried all different things, different isolates, consuming a lactase enzyme with it, going for raw dairy, uh, all that stuff. Nope, no dice. My frustration led me to just eliminate it entirely. That was 2009 uh, and I haven't looked back. So I, I don't consume dairy, no butter, no cheese, no milk, uh, no cream, eggs, Sometimes people get confused and they consider eggs to be dairy. Eggs are not dairy. There's no milk in them. Although I guess they just kind of get thrown into the same section in the grocery store. <laughs> but I consume eggs, plenty of eggs, um, but no milk. No milk and no milk products. And same thing, no milk derivatives like whey, so on and so forth. I think it's just a reaction to the proteins. So when it comes to gluten, I think some people just genuinely react negatively to that protein, just the same as I react negatively to dairy proteins. Now, there could be way more to this subject than I'm aware of. I don't know. I'm not um, claiming to be a, um, an authority on the topic. What I do know is it's created a lot of frustration, and I just figured, fuck it, 
I don't need to consume dairy. I'm just going to eliminate it. So that's what I do. Um, same thing with gluten. I don't have a problem with gluten. I could eat a bagel. I could eat bread. No issues. If I was consuming wheat or a wheat-based product as my primary source of carbohydrates, right? And I was doing it multiple meals throughout the day. I wouldn't feel great. I've noticed that, right? Times I said, well, you know, I'm going to make pasta my uh, primary carbohydrate source. Or you know, I didn't prep rice. I didn't prep potatoes. And here's some bread. It's, it's easily available. I'm going to choose that as my carb source. And I do it multiple times throughout the day. My appetite starts to diminish. I start to feel a little bit bloated. I don't feel quite as good. So for that reason, same thing. I, I don't. I won't. I won't not consume wheat or gluten-containing products, but I just limit it because I just feel that my digestion is just more efficient without it. I generally opt for rice, potatoes. I don't eat a lot of oats, although you know oats are fine. Rice and potatoes. I, I find foods that digest efficiently for me are the foods that I like to gravitate toward. So when it comes to proteins. You know, chicken is monotonous. It's not knocking my socks off, but it's it's utilitarian. It gets the job done, and I can eat it multiple times a day without any digestive discomfort and without, you know, really hating it. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. So I find chicken and fish and eggs to be my my most utilized sources of protein because they digest easily. Uh, I like steak. You know, sometimes I crave red meat. When I consume it, though, it's definitely slower. Not going to go eating steak three times a day. I would just feel like hell. I've done it in the past where I was dieting and I was maybe dieting on some beef tenderloin, very lean, and I was craving it. So I included it. And after about two weeks of having it twice a day, I can't even look at it. Red meat, I like to save for when I'm craving it. I'm, I'm not opposed to it whatsoever. I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, red meat's no good for you. You shouldn't consume it. Not at all. Uh, I think, in fact, when it comes to food, there really aren't any right or wrong answers. It's only what works and what doesn't work or what you feel well consuming or what you don't feel well consuming. So, you know, if red meat works great for you, fantastic. If pasta works great for you, awesome. If you can get ready for shows, uh, feeling good and getting absolutely sliced, eating bagels all day, dude, have at it. There's no right or wrong. There's only what works and what doesn't work. But you probably saw uh, the episode where I make, don't ask me where the name came from, but man cakes. I know that sounds really creepy, <laughs> but it's like a breakfast version. It's, it's mainly a way for me to prepare eggs in advance without it being gross. Because right, I like eggs. I'm a big fan of eggs. I like having them as my first meal. I don't I don't always want to wake up and down chicken, fish, steak, turkey. So eggs, I really do like as my first meal. But if you just prep, I don't know, some scrambled eggs in advance, and then you go to consume them, they're going to be gross. Uh, I, I don't like hard-boiled eggs. I know people will do that. They stink. The texture is gross. They're hard to they like they're like dry. I found that by taking uh, you know six or seven eggs, mixing it with a little bit of, of gluten free pancake mix, add some berries, a little bit of oat milk. Boom! I've got a, a breakfast that I can prepare in advance, so that when I wake up in the morning, I can just heat it, eat it, and go. Because a lot of times my schedule demands that. Being busy, um, my day starting very early. So that's probably what you saw. That's the answer to that. Next question. Just finishing up a bulk. What is the best way to peel the fat without losing too much muscle? I will say the best way to start, in your case, let's call it a cut, right? The goal is to peel off body fat. The ideal place to start that is, you mentioned being at the end of a bulk. That's good because at the end of a bulk, chances are you've been eating a lot. Calories are high. Hopefully, not the cleanest diet. What I mean by that is if a person goes through an off season, they're ready to start getting in shape and they look at their diet and they're like, well, you know, my diet is perfectly clean. Uh, it, it's almost like a pre contest diet. It becomes a little bit more difficult to get that person in shape because it's like, well, where do you go from there? So if I, I, I have found personally, not only with myself, but the people that I work with, and yes, I coach people regularly, the best way to go into a cut is big. 
strong, you know, big meaning carrying a lot of muscle. Even if you're carrying some fat, not a problem. Big, strong. Why is strength important? Strength is important because when you begin the dieting process, in order to hang on to muscle, you need to train hard and you need to train heavy. Starting off strong, okay, puts you in a more favorable position to accomplish that. So big, strong, not too fat. If you've got rolls and rolls of body fat, that's not great. Again, carrying some, you know, if you reach around back and you can grab a hunk of fat in your lower back, that's not the end of the world. As long as you're big, strong, eating a lot, okay, then you have places to go. If I look at a person's diet, if a person comes to me and they're 16 weeks out and they say, hey, I want to get in shape. And the dude, I could tell the dude's big, he's got a lot of muscle, even if he's carrying plenty of body fat and he sends me his diet and he's eating like a horse, even if it's not all clean. If he told me I'm eating a dozen donuts a day and, you know, but I eat six meals and the base, the basis for those meals is pretty decent. Maybe there's a lot of junk on top of it. That's actually a great place to be (laughs) because what you know is that you only need to make incremental adjustments maybe add in some cardio, and the person's going to respond favorably. In your case, the best way to diet without losing too much muscle, like I just said, begin big, strong, not too fat. Then what do you do? You make very minor adjustments. You want to keep the frequency of food consumption high, right? So five to six meals a day. Uh, When you're always consuming food, the body is reassured, okay, we've got plenty of food coming in. Uh, we're not at a deficit, don't need to hoard you know, calories. It's like water, right? Calories are like water to an extent. Yes, it's not an apples to apples comparison. If you consume too much calories, yes, they will add up. If you consume too much water, uh, you will just eliminate it. However, when you're consuming lots of calories, more than the body needs, the body is reassured, okay? And it says, hey, we've got plenty coming in. We don't need to hoard this. We can, uh, we can afford to keep our metabolic rate high. Same with water. When you're consuming plenty of water, the body says, hey, we got tons of this stuff. We don't need to retain it. Let it go. Same with food. If you go into a diet and you're only eating a few times a day, you're not eating a lot, how do you increase, you know, how do you increase calories? You almost have to backtrack. You have to go backwards before you can go forwards. Eat often, okay? Just eliminate crap, right? You don't need to worry necessarily about calories right off the bat. Uh, I mean, yes, it's going to come down to creating a caloric deficit, but if you keep carbs, proteins, and even fats plenty high, but you focus first and foremost on eliminating any excess garbage. I don't know about you guys, but when I begin a, uh, a contest prep, I don't even really begin considering you know, how many grams of this or that I'm taking in each day. The first thing I do is I eliminate any excess calories, meaning sometimes I'll snack on potato chips or um, I'll just grab some granola bars or maybe I'll have some ice cream at night. First thing I do is eliminate that stuff along with, right, things like uh, calories coming from sauces, you know, maybe it's barbecue sauce. Uh, get, I get rid of all that stuff first. Now, by the time I do that, Okay, and I'm only consuming just like high quality, natural, whole foods without even reducing any of the amounts, I begin to get tighter. Then I'll add in some cardio, right? 20, 30 minutes a day. And when I say cardio, right, cardio is kind of a misused term. In order for it to really be a cardiovascular workout, you need your heart rate up there. Now, when I do cardio, my heart rate is (laughs) not very high. (laughs) You know, maybe it's between 120 and 130, uh, but I'm a bigger guy, right? 260 to 270. And just going from not moving, meaning, you know, on an average day, what do I do? Okay, I I sit at a desk, I'm on a computer. Yes, I train however many hours I'm awake. I'm sedentary for a lot of those hours. So just by adding some walking, okay, to my regimen once a day, twice a day, even if I'm not going crazy with the intensity or anything like that, that's enough, again, to make a big difference, right? So first, eliminate crap. Two, Add some increased activity. You can call it cardio if you want, but let's just call it walking, right? You go on the treadmill. Then, you know, that's going to take you a certain percentage of the way. You're going to notice a big change. Yes, you want to keep the hormonal support, (laughs) right? Because with enough testosterone and or other compounds, that's what's going to give you that anti-catabolic effect, right? And keep your body from chewing away at protein. Although, If you reach a certain point and calories are low enough and or you use something like thyroid hormone, you're going to chew through protein and chew through muscle no matter what. By keeping food high, by keeping physical activity high, 
uh, by training heavy, by keeping enough anabolics in there, and only eliminating the calories that you need to to elicit a response. And I guess that's really the key thing, right? You don't do more than you need to. So oftentimes, you know, when I'm working with people, what's generally considered a sane amount of weight to lose per week is say two pounds per week. And if a person's checking in, they lose two pounds, I can, I can see a, a noticeable difference in their physique and maybe I'll say, okay, you know what, uh, eliminate the two tablespoons of peanut butter from meal three and maybe I make one other seemingly minor adjustment and they'll be like, well, that's it? Yeah, dude, that's it. Because that right there maybe is a couple hundred calories a day. Uh, we don't need to go crazy. If you go eliminating all this stuff and throwing cardio through the roof, uh, aside from burning up muscle, where are you going to go? Right? You're going to blow your load too early on. So the key is to make very small incremental changes, just no greater of a change than is needed to elicit a response really is, is the key thing here. Why do more than you have to? I mean, I know when I look back times when I was working with a coach, if I checked in and he's looking at my pictures and he's considering my body weight and he says, great, don't make any changes. What that's telling me is, you're on track. You're doing a great job. There's no reason to change anything. I never wanted a guy, you know, whoever was coaching me to say, okay, cut this from this meal, add more cardio. Then it's like, fuck, <laughs> less food, more cardio. You don't want to have to do that unless you need to, right? But if you're losing weight and it's, you have to be patient. That's the, that's the thing that I think a lot of people struggle with when they don't work with a coach, their expectations are unrealistic. They don't know what's normal. So from week to week, dude, you don't see a lot of changes in yourself. But when you're working with a coach, now when people check in with me, I'm not looking at them every day of the week. I, I see them once a week when they check in. So guess what? I'm able to see that difference much easier than they are. And I'm able to look at it in a way that's not emotional. Most people can't do that. So what they'll start doing is pulling out more stops, right? Do more cardio, take more drugs, uh, eat less food, and what do they do? They just fucking burn out and then they end up making it so that it's impossible to achieve their goal. Don't do that. Right? If you can do that yourself, fantastic. If you've tried it in the past and all that happened was you got small, weak, and then you gave up because you made it impossible for yourself, hire a coach. Right? Uh, everybody should do it at least once. If, if you go through the experience, if you go through the process, at least with someone who knows what the fuck they're doing, some people too, their, their experience is tarnished by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. They put them through hell. You have the person doing all sorts of crazy stuff that they didn't need to do. Go through with someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, it should be one of those scenarios where it's like, man, we've been doing this for 10 weeks. I've dropped 20, 25 pounds. I look like a different person. I'm just as strong as when we started. And I look like, you know, I look totally different. That's what you want. So if you can do that yourself, awesome. If not, hire a coach. That's my advice. Those are my sage words. <laughs> Until next time, guys. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.